Welcome to another Arius Wave update. This is take three. A um, bit of coughing involved and a bit of uh, getting things mixed up. But anyway, so by now you can see that I've actually done some work on this. Um, whereas in the first video, I hadn't even looked at this particular chart. I just thought I'd add to it. So this is the US dollar and what I imagine that it's going to do in the future using Arius Wave and using the first move up as a as a guide the first zigzag being a wave one in a type two sorry a type one weak five wave move um, and you'll notice that since 2008 especially when it's considered that you know the 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 stock market has, was disconnected from reality um, you've seen the US dollar move up incrementally. And during those periods in time where the US dollar is correcting, um, that's when the markets tend to rise. Okay, so I've been observing this for for a while and I thought that it'd be just really cool if I could you know make a visual here to help explain how I see things you know, evolving over time and, and why the US dollar can still go up whilst the markets also progressively move higher as well as cryptos. And the reason for that is it probably has a lot to do with uh, not only the accelerated money printing, but now at this point in time where it's starting to get really serious, <clears throat> It, it's also interest rates are starting to have an effect also, right? Now, if you understand where the Dow Jones is and the NASDAQ, if you've looked at my previous video, right, we are in a corrective pattern and it's, it's completely corrective, okay? It's a long-term corrective pattern, which, you know, it may expand, but it, it doesn't make, really make much of a difference, but it kind of really just highlights how, you know, Arius Wave can sort of pinpoint where we are and also explain, you know, the reasons why we are going to step up in this particular way over time, uh, given the corrective patterns or the ups and downs that will occur in those markets, which includes crypto as well. So for Wave 1 here, you know, that was the beginning. Um, the corrective portion A, B, C, D, E, as previously uh, forecasted, you know, when I started producing the videos, um, would have this effect eventually. And it's, it's starting to happen. And down at the small degree, we're only basically in wave two of the first leg up of this wave three zigzag. Okay, and the reason I've got these labels here is because I was basically trying to line up um, using, you know, the whole idea that um, when the US dollar rallies, uh, usually there's a, the markets go down. So at the moment, we're in one of those legs where the US dollar is rallying in an impulsive manner. And we will likely see a correction in the stock market, which obviously I've alluded to in my previous video. And that one in particular is wave E of the wave D that started in the GFC, All right? So that's a fairly big, that's, that's the portion of the move that's going to be the one that goes down the furthest, in my opinion, because this is lining up perfectly when with when wave three and four and five of wave A occurs. All right, so it's like a, like a good piece of evidence right there. And then once that bottoms and then we start to get upside in the Dow Jones for wave C, that will then complete the wave D that started in the GFC. All right, but then there's another wave E for the pattern that, you know, the larger wave D, which started in 1987, right? Part of the B wave in brackets that started in basically 2000, right? We need to see the wave E for that. So we're going to see another shock for that particular wave E. And then once we go down for, sorry, once we start to move up again for the completion of the larger pattern, this wave four should 
last longer and we should see the end of the larger wave D since basically 1987. All right, and then after that, there needs to be the the larger wave E, which may not be that large. This is going to be a wave five. This actually may be smaller. And this is obviously a bit exaggerated. We, we will see a wave E and then we will see, who knows, it could be uh, a, probably a very drawn out uh, wave four, right? For a, a, probably a really large bull market run to the upside uh, before we get yet another pullback. Oops, sorry. Uh, all right, before we get another, yeah, anyway. So at this point in time, it, it's just basically piecing, piecing those things together. Like after we complete the D wave and the E wave of, you know, since what started in 1929, all the way up until we get to this point uh, right here, then I believe we're going to see like an even bigger rally, probably one of the biggest rallies that we've seen. Okay. So that, that may take a little while to set in, uh, to marinate, you know, in your mind a little, because it's, it's pretty complex, but when you piece it all together, it makes sense why the US dollar is rising and especially during <clears throat> this period where interest rates are doing what they're doing. Now, the interesting thing <clears throat> about when, uh, as this starts to rise, different things will start to break, in my opinion, because if you look at it, 2008 occurred, US dollar started rising. Things slowly are starting to break, right? But as we get to where we are now, we're starting to see the interest rate rises. So they didn't happen right at this low or here, but they're happening rather more here, right? So how long will that go for? And what kind of pattern is the 10 year bond yield actually producing when you think about what this is doing? And it's also quite interesting that in the 10 year bond yield, it's also a wave E, <clears throat> right? So I have a theory that the 10 year bond yield is actually producing a similar pattern, but is only just getting started, only just got started in 2020, right? And for that reason, I won't be able to jam it all into this video, but I will be I do have the idea already uh, that's come to mind and I do believe I see the pattern unfolding that's going to see interest rates slowly step up in this very same manner until they get really high. Like we're talking above 10%, probably even above 15%, maybe even heading towards 20%, right? Because you have to understand that real rates, we're still we're still negative rates, even though rates are going higher, real rates are negative still, right? Just listen to Peter Schiff's podcasts and just listen to, you know, George Gammon critique Peter Schiff um, and things like that. And obviously what's happening, happening in, you know, in the market that you can tell, it's pretty obvious. Uh, and you obviously you, you'll come to this realization and you know just look at the market so is, is asset prices coming down that fast i mean they've just done so much uh tinkering and you know wizardry with the markets that that you know real interest rates are negative even when interest rates go higher so i see this process being dragged out a lot and i see opportunities that will come with this because it's not going to happen in a massive straight line right and i do believe that once we get to the end of this type of move that, that, that i'm talking about here i do believe that, that there's something even more amazing is going to happen 
when not only interest rates start to go back down again uh, and the US dollar starts, we're going to see some kind of rally that is has never been seen, I reckon, in history. It's going to be that huge, right? Whenever it is that we get there, I can't tell you exactly when that's going to happen at this point. It's way too off in the future. But given the understanding of the larger pattern in fractal form, and you know in 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 interest rates and us dollar and also the stock market you know even i suppose that does carry over to cryptos um yeah we are heading towards a massive opportunity but there will be heaps of massive opportunities along the way that's the best way i can put it so i suggest you keep watching these videos because i'm going to I'm slowly going to piece this all together in, in, in a way that's going to really bring it out. And also I'm teaching this stuff. So head on over to the .com and get involved because if you really want to understand this and, you know, have one-on-one -on -one type of thing that, that can happen, right? It's going to happen. So hopefully you found this video interesting and informative. Thank you for watching.